As you've seen so far today, augmented reality provides an opportunity for you to experience things in a completely new way. To seamlessly overlay digital data onto the physical world with a rich, visual, interactive experience that fundamentally changes the way that you operate, service, manufacture, and design products. However, as with all opportunities, there are challenges. Imagine the world in the not too distant future with a projected 50 billion connected things. And then imagine the millions of apps that will be necessary so that we can interact with those things. Now, we're already beginning to see an explosion of purpose-built apps for connected products. For example, I use an August app to unlock the front door of my house, a Wemo app to turn on the lights, and a Nest app to control the temperature. I use Lono to automatically water my lawn, and a Viper app to remotely start my car. And we're only just beginning the journey. Think of a refinery with tens of thousands of connected pumps and valves, and then all of the possible service, maintenance, and control apps that could be developed. Or imagine a factory with hundreds of different types of machines, each of them with specific data, valuable to different types of people, managers, operators, service techs, and others. In a world with so many smart connected things, how will people know what things they can interact with? How will they know how to identify a specific thing? And how will they know what apps to use with those things, like this motorcycle, for example? And then how are they going to keep all of this up to date? Seems overwhelming, doesn't it? The answer is obviously not an app for everything. Now, to solve this problem, we at PTC are expanding our IoT platform with new capabilities coming this summer through a project we call Thing X. Thing X, short for Thing Experience, because these capabilities will fundamentally change the way that we all experience and interact with the things in our world. Now, to begin with, the capabilities delivered with Project Thing X will revolutionize the way apps are delivered. Instead of millions of different apps to download, install, keep up to date, and remember when to use, we will deliver a single app, Thing Browser. Thing Browser can universally recognize smart connected things and deliver the right experience based on where the user is, who they are, and what thing they're browsing. Similar to the way a web browser unlocks the potential of the World Wide Web, Thing Browser will present endless possible ways to interact with the explosion of smart connected products and systems that are going to be all around us. Imagine simply looking at your surroundings through Thing Browser and discovering all of the things that you can experience and then, with a single touch, being able to benefit from all that those things can share about themselves. I'll show you Thing Browser in just a minute, but first I want to introduce another innovation delivered with Project Thing X. Thing Server. Thing Server is to Thing Browser what a web server is to a web browser. It serves up content. It's the heart of the suite. Thing Server manages all of the various experiences that might exist for a physical thing and through them delivers from across your organization all of the relevant information, the relevant analysis about that thing, from its digital definition to its operation and service history. This content that connects the device's digital definition to its physical instantiation is known as its digital twin. Now, the digital twin can be presented on many different devices in many different ways. It could be text in tables. It could be presented with gauges and dials in a 2D dashboard, or in the context of CAD-generated 3D graphics. However, this content is most impactful, it's most compelling, when it's presented in the context of the physical things themselves, through the power of augmented reality. Now, you probably didn't realize it, but you've already seen Thing Browser and Thing Server in action today. The apps that we demonstrated earlier from KTM and Sysmex were actually not apps at all but experiences dynamically loaded through Thing Browser for the motorcycle and the blood analyzer. Here on the iPad screen right now, I'm opening the single Thing Browser app, and the browser is waiting for me to, I, to scan a view mark 
So I'll scan the view mark on the KTM bike. And as I do that, you'll see that I'm presented with a few different experiences. There's a uh, marketing experience to teach me more about the bike, and there's also the service experience, since I'm authenticated as a service technician, that is exactly the experience that Simon showed earlier. While it may seem simple, this very powerful approach changes what's possible in bridging the digital and physical worlds. Now, whether you're a service technician, an operator, a consumer, or anyone else, scanning anything brings up the data about that thing that's relevant to your role. Now, I could do the same thing with the view mark on the blood analyzer, but let me show you something else. Another example of the power of Thing Browser and Thing Server. This is one that you might, ex might encounter in your office. So here I'm going to use Thing Browser to scan the view mark on the battery backup for this computer system here. And again, because I'm logged in as a technician, I'm presented with a variety of experiences. Now, to help me explain this example, I'd like to introduce Hervé Couré. Hervé is the CIO at Schneider Electric, and Schneider is a 25 billion euro global industrial company focusing on energy management and automation, and of course, a very long PTC customer. Hi, Mike. Hervé, thanks for joining us here today at Thing Event. Can you tell us a little bit about what Thing X could mean to Schneider Electric? Absolutely. Well, we see Things X and Things Browser transforming the way our service technicians will ultimately interact with our products like this micro uh, data center. So a micro data center like this one is used when a fair bit of computing power is required on the edge. For instance, in a bank branch, a retail store, or an oil refinery, for instance. At Schneider Electric, we already use a breadth of PTC solution for the design and development uh, and servicing of our products. Uh, most recently, of course, we started connecting our products, such as this micro data center, uh, to our backend system, leveraging PTC's ThingsWorks. In fact, you can see now on the dashboard here, we're tracking the performance of these products, which are reporting a number of characteristics, such as location, temperature, battery status, and it's useful remaining live, among other things. In this example, our field service technician can also see information in the dashboard from our other enterprise systems. So data about the product's configuration from our windshield PLM system, data from ServiceMax about the customer service entitlement and warranty status, and data from Salesforce.com when, when it relates to upsell and cross-sell opportunities. So while the dashboard view is valuable, at Schneider, we know that our field service technician can be even more productive by seeing all this information in the context of the actual product they are servicing. So I think, Mike, you're going to be my field service technician I today. I will be your technician. Right? So, so with the ThingsWorks platform, you can immediately see information about this particular uh, UPS right here in Boston. For instance, you can see the battery level and the machine temperature uh, driven by data that is trimmed off by the machine. You will also notice the status uh, um, indicator, the little I, which is orange, indicating that there is some maintenance required. In fact, when Mike selects on the information button, we're notified that the battery needs to be replaced. So he will choose to perform that task now, and the instructions are clearly presented without, no, without any ambiguity. He can see that first he needs to remove a faceplate, then a couple of screws, then the support brackets, and then the battery itself. All of this will enable uh, the technician to execute the procedure quickly and without any mistakes. Hervé, that's a, that's a great example of using Thing Browser and augmented reality to extend the power of the ThingWorks IoT platform. Sure. Now, what kind of an impact will this technology have on your business, and, and where do you see it going in the future? Sure. Well, the ThingsWork platform and the PTC solution that power ThingsX will allow Schneider ultimately to connect the dots or, as we like to say, uh, to create a closed loop between front-end and back-end systems so that we can drive business values for our customers. For example, um, we can close the loop to offer digitally enabled services to our customers or to identify upsell or cross-sell opportunities to deliver more value. We can also close the loop with engineering 
and incorporate feedback from the field directly into our engineering process on the CAD and PLM systems so that we develop you know, more innovative and better quality products. And finally, what we just saw, we can have a close look with our field service technician so that they are better informed about the status of our products, issues, diagnosis, before they arrive on site so that they are more efficient and effective in servicing our customers. So that's just one of the many ways uh, uh, of how we are digitizing our business ecosystem. Uh, AR is a great technology for us to bring the world of IT and OT closer together. As we like to say, our connected technologies ensure life is on for everyone, everywhere, and at every moment. Great. Well, thank you very much for being thank here. We much. really appreciate Thanks. it. Great example. Uh, it, it, really is, it really is another outstanding example of how ThingX will change the way that you experience things in the future. But today, Creating a rich experience like you just saw is complicated. It's costly and it's time consuming. It requires highly skilled developers to use very sophisticated tools and complex SDKs. And it simply takes too long. Now, we at PTC believe that enterprises need easy to use tools that will allow them to quickly try out new approaches, hopefully succeed, but in many cases fail, and then iterate fast they must be able to quickly figure out how their users can best experience these things. They must be able to present the right information from the right sources in the right way so that they can maximize the impact of the experiences that they're creating. So to enable exactly this, Project Thing X will include one more capability, Thing Builder. Thing Builder will allow you to seamlessly access all of the important information from your Thing's digital twin, and then quickly and easily build intuitive experiences for those things, leveraging rich 3D graphics and augmented reality. In a codeless environment, without the need for complex SDKs, you'll be able to drag and drop 3D graphics from CAD, generate a mobile-friendly representation that strips out proprietary IP, and then decorate that 3D content with data. Data streaming from the things themselves or with data from other enterprise systems like PLM, SLM, and ALM. All of those systems can inform those things. And you'll be able to prepare this content to be consumed in a deeply engaging augmented reality experience. You can quickly capture your ideas and iterate on them without a steep learning curve and without a huge investment of time and energy. Let me give you a quick preview of Thing Builder and show you how easily we built the UPS experience that Hervé and I just presented. Now here in Thing Builder on the left side, we have a collection of resources and UI elements that are used to create the experience. In the middle, we have our canvas, which might take on the form factor of a tablet or a mobile phone. And on the right, we have attributes and properties for the UI elements and resources that we're using. Now, in each of the examples you saw today, the experience was built around a 3D physical thing. So in this environment, we'll start by bringing in the 3D model of the Schneider UPS. Next, we'll need to place a view mark on the 3D model, which will allow us to uniquely identify a particular UPS and then correctly position any additional 3D information. The first icon that I saw when I represented, the first icon represented the UPS status. So we'll drag and drop an image of that status indicator into the experience and we'll easily position it in the desired location in 3D. We want to control the display of that image based on what's actually happening on the machine itself in real time. Because Thing Builder is part of the ThingWorks IoT platform, we can simply browse the properties of the UPS's digital twin, select the attributes that we care about, in this case the status, and then again with drag and drop, bind that attribute from the UPS to the display of the image. We'll repeat that process for all the other images and values that we want displayed and bind them to data in the same way. We would also simply drag and drop the animation of the disassembly sequence and bind that to the step-by-step -step controls in the experience. And when we're done, we simply publish it to Things Server and it's ready to be experienced. It's that easy. So whether you're an independent individual developer or a solution builder in a large ISV, Thing Builder will allow all of you to build compelling, highly differentiated solutions faster than you could ever imagine. Thing Browser, Thing Server, and Thing Builder will completely change the way 
We all interact with the things in the world around us. Now, PTC's best and brightest are working right now to make this breakthrough technology available so that every one of you can soon build experiences just like the ones that you saw here today. With that, Jim, back to you in the theater.